Good morning, guys. How's everyone doing? So, yes, shout out to everybody in the chat, the regulars, um, everybody in New York. Happy to see you, Sonia. Carissa, happy to have you here. The rabbit assistant is in the house. Uh, shout out to everyone in the chat. I hope everyone's having a wonderful morning. Now, before we get started, okay, because this is our last piece, but to drive this point home, right, our interview with Mr. Mark Class is we have two real life, one Amber Alert and one mi missing child, okay? And so I wanted to make sure that this point that we would been talking about is really, really driven home and that people are understanding what is happening with the system, okay? So right now we have one teenager that's missing out of Florida. Shout out to anyone that's out of Florida. Um, they did ask for people to share the clip to bring some awareness. We're gonna talk about this clip and we're gonna talk about that Amber Alert slash missing child criteria and what it actually looks like in real life, in real time right now, okay? So let's play this right now and get going. If you're just getting in, shout out to you. Uh, you can always watch the replay. We have two other episodes before this, so just a heads up. Let's start right now. Hillsborough County deputies searching for a 14-year-old boy who hasn't been seen in about two weeks, reported missing in Thanona Sasa. Edward Gilbert here on the right side of your screen. Again, 14 years old, last seen leaving his home near Joe Ebert Road and Williams Road. He was on a bicycle around 5.30 in the morning back on July 2nd. That's the last time he was seen. Gilbert described as a white 14-year-old, 5 feet 7 inches tall, about 108 pounds, brown hair, brown eyes. His bicycle said to be black and yellow, according to the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. Anyone with information is asked to give a call to detectives at 813-247-8200. You can also do your part in helping out by sharing this out on social media. So that is what we have right now going on in Florida. We have a young teenage boy by the name of Edward Gil Gilbert, excuse me, who has been missing. Absolutely. Here we have another, an Amber Alert issued for Union City, Oklahoma and OKC. OK, thank you for that heads up. So as you can see, these Amber Alerts kind of happen in that moment notice. But this specific kid right here that we're about to talk about, I'm going to show you the Florida website and, and you guys can see what the issues might be here, right? If you are missing. So here is what it looks like for an Amber Alert. Let me see again if I can zoom in because I know that this might not be the best quality vision. But here we go. I realized that when I went into the Florida website to figure out where this kiddo was missing and, and whether it's an Amber Alert or a missing child, which I, they tend to have two different types, I guess, in Florida. But here's the, the deal. This kiddo went missing. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you, Bella's World. I appreciate you uh, for doing that. Thank you. But this kiddo's been missing, I think, um, July 2nd, okay? So he went missing July 2nd, guys, and they're just now putting an alert for a missing child. We are now on the 16th of July. So let's look at that criteria right now for a missing child. The child's under the age of 18. Law enforcement has been well, well-founded belief based on the active investigation that the child is in danger of death or serious bodily harm. There's a detailed description and photograph of the child. Local law enforcement agency or of jurisdictions recommend activation. And then they have a different kind of uh, missing kiddo alert as well, missing child. It's, it's an endangered, right? So in this one, I guess the only difference is, is that there has to be... Um, the, that the child is in imminent danger of death or serious bodily harm. So the language here is imminent danger, whereas the other one is just a missing child and it does not say imminent danger. But see, the child went missing July 2nd. And here we are July 16th. This is a teenager. Okay, so this teenager did not get an Amber Alert. He just got an alert. And it took two weeks to do a media alert about it. And as you can see, guys, when I go to their website, I'm just curious to know what that activation map looks like. This is what it looks like. They had 228. Now, mind you, it doesn't say how long or what year these activations happen. Um, I'm assuming that this is like for what well, looks right here, 2020. This could be for the year 2020. They had 228 activations and only 72 out of those resolved 
due to Amber Alert. So I guess in 2020, that would give you a good idea, map of what's what's up. I don't know. I could be wrong. Um, but I thought this was interesting because I'm like, okay, so then 228 because of the Amber Alert activation, but only 72 of those were resolved. And then we have this kiddo right now that is missing, right? We can't, we don't know where he's at. And they just issued a missing child alert for the media. And he's been gone for a little over two weeks. This is a huge deal. Okay. So I thought that was interesting. I was like, okay, well, at least Florida has um, some more information up in front about their Amber Alert. But there is a difference between an Amber Alert and a missing child. I'm going to show you another page. So there is another, this one is an actual Amber Alert. See if I can share this. And this Amber Alert specifically is, this child's been gone for a month. Okay. This, this baby has been gone for a month. And let me see. There's a timeline of her. Her name is uh, Summer Wells. Here we go. So Summer Wells, so yesterday, um, this was kind of trending on Twitter because what happened was dad made, made a statement that said something to the effect of um, they don't expect her to find her alive at this time. They don't expect her to find her alive. And there's a timeline of her disappearance. This is a five-year-old, okay? So this is a different state. This is the state of Tennessee. We just saw Florida. What we saw was Edward Gilbert missing. And if you have more information about that, please contact those authorities. Uh, but El he's been missing for about, I don't know, a good two weeks. Okay. And they're just now doing a missing child update. Here we are um, on a different child, age five, Summer Wells. Okay. So this child disappeared on the 15th of June. Okay. And this is out of Tennessee. And really what they give is a timeline. This is what she looks like. So if you have any information, please contact the authorities regarding her. What I thought was interesting was when I was looking through here was that I'm thinking in my mind, did they activate what, what led to the activation of the Amber Alert? But they didn't activate it right away. You see, she went, she went missing and or was last seen sometime at like 530 on June 15th. OK, and then they called the police and filed a missing child report at 630. So about an hour of a window. Right. And so from then on out, they did that same night. They did an endangered child alert for summer. OK, so when I see this, I'm like, this must be a different kind of missing child alert. It's not like an Amber Alert quite yet. Right. So then around that time, I think it was what that day at about 11 a.m., Concerns for child safety. So then they activated an Amber Alert. And when they do that, they say here, the most serious of missing children's cases are the ones that make it there. So there has to be imminent danger for that child at that time. So I'm sitting back and I'm thinking, all right, so real quickly, they determine this five-year-old, which makes sense. She's five. Um, I'm thinking in my mind, wherever this is in Tennessee, I know there's a lot of terrain and it sounds like that was why they made an Amber Alert and they quickly wanted to get on it. However, she has not been found. She's been gone for a month. Um, and so they don't expect her to be, you know, alive at this point based on the terrain. But yet they can't really determine what exactly happened to her, uh, where she's at. And this is just to give you guys an idea of that terrain and what it looks like. And this is all uh, you can find that information on Twitter. If you have any information, of course, you've got to contact those authorities um, and make them aware of what is going on. OK, so she's still missing. She's been gone for a month, guys. And um, it is a really sad situation, in my opinion, that this is how far this has gone. Um, but it shows you two different pictures. You have a teenager that goes missing. It takes them two weeks to do an alert for the media. You have a child that obviously is younger. Um, in a really bad terrain area. And so they initiated an Amber Alert. Now, if we go to the state of Tennessee website, which is what we're about to navigate to real quick, just so I can show you guys what that looks like. Let's see, here we go. Make sure that this is, here we go. We're gonna share this criteria with you guys. You guys will see it. This is Tennessee. And as you can see, Tennessee has different kinds of criterias. And if you're from Tennessee, you're probably well aware and informed of this. You have your Amber Alert, Silver Alert, Endangered Child, Endangered Alert, uh, Holly Bobo Act, 
and missing child lists. And they even have a list for missing children 18 and or older. So as you can see, every state is going to run something different um, and it's going to look a little bit different. But like even in their Amber Alert, they have their very own criteria of what that looks like. Right. So to me, between the time that uh, Summer Wells went missing, there was an hour of time that they waited to call the police. OK. And then from there on out, they waited to enact. And so then what we're doing here is we're waiting, we're waiting. And, and, and it makes me wonder, all right, so then if the state of Tennessee has this process going and if the state of Florida has the same or has a different process. But when I showed you guys those numbers, when they did 278 Amber Alerts and only 78 kids were found from those, we probably have a problem, right? We want to make sure that 100 percent of the kids are found all the time, but it doesn't always happen that way. Just, just a thought. So I, again, bringing in real life in comparison, what these two different states look like, what they do, it is a lot of information, guys. But the best thing I think that we can all do at this point is check out your criteria in your state. Figure out what that looks like. And if it's not for you, then it's for your sibling, your grandchild, your nieces, your nephews, because you don't ever want to find yourself in that situation. And one thing that Mr. Mark Class said in our interview was making sure that you had a point of contact for, you know, when something like this goes down, you have a point of contact, somebody that can handle some of this information and some of the questioning, should you go through something like this, right? Because like I said, we don't ever plan for things like that. It is a very sad situation for sure. Um, but again, and I say, you know, if you guys have information, you know, please contact those authorities. Summer Wells has been gone for a little over a month. Uh, Dad made a statement yesterday saying that he did not expect her to be alive at this time, unfortunately. Um, and then the other child by the name of Edward Gilbert, who is from the state of Florida, has been gone for about two weeks, two weeks missing. OK, and they had just called him in um, as missing. So just a heads up, guys. There's some real stuff going on out in the world. There's some real kids, and they. We just had someone here on the uh, on our chat saying that there is an actual active Amber Alert. So these are happening a lot. Now we'll always have time for the manufactured beef, right? Like there's always time for for the celebrity stuff and the drama, but this is the stuff that really matters at the end of the day. So thank you so much for bringing that to our attention. Shout out to you again, uh, Bella. Thank you so much for this super chat. Um, I really appreciate you and, num you know, just coming to our chat. Number one, we love having you here. Yes. Work. If you're working, shout out to you. Thank you for listening to us. We're going to get onto the last part of our interview and you don't want to miss it because we get into some deep stuff with Mr. Mark class. Shout out to the plainest chain as well, who was uh, part of that interview as well. Um, she will tell you, he, he was a pretty cool dude, very nice, helpful person um, to, to bring light to some of these situations. Hey, hey, all right. Yes, so, and also please know your laws when placing Amber Alerts, they can save a life. That's right. Laws and criteria, guys, very important. If you're ever bored, if you have nothing to do, and even if you don't, just plan, plan, plan. Thank you. And I will share this um, Amber Alert here because they did ask for people to share it in their media. And, you know, this is our platform. We got to share this information. Okay, so thank you so much. Yes, love it. All right, we're going to get started with this other part of the interview. Now, it was a lot of information. If you guys remember when we talked about um, with Mr. Mark Class, he wanted to make sure that people understood, you know, it's gotten worse. Police and community relations have gotten worse. Um, they're not getting any better, but it hasn't been any better from 2011 to 2021. We're still dealing with situations in which, you know, children of color are not seen on the main platforms as much as, you know, the other kids. That, that still continues to be the feeling, right? And yet um, we have to figure that out and we have to figure out how to make these relationships work at the end of the day, because they are important. Even when we can't stand the police, we still need some services and help. We still have to figure it out. So I, I just want to preface that because that was something that was very much suggested by Mr. Mark Class. So let's get started with this other part. I hope everyone's having a great morning. Um, again, we'll come back and hash it out and figure things out, but this is going to be a very good part and very important for everyone to, to listen to. 
what his responses are. All right, let's start. of us that are advocates, right, that want to look at the bigger picture, change the bigger picture. For some of us, you know, when the recommendations that you give about the Amber Alert, what are your, what's your advice, right? Again, you know, I, you made a great point saying about how media is growing, even social media. YouTube is becoming kind of like the next television for several people. It's accessible, it's easy, and it's, you know, it can be free, right? Mm -hmm. What's your advice for a lot of us that are trying to advocate for change um, in this situation, in the Amber Alert, in missing children? Well, I mean, for the Amber Alert, it's clear to me, and I think I pointed this out to you in the the the, uh, the slides that I, I sent you, is that it, it needs to be a, a, a local issue. In other words, if you're in that, that town that I was mentioning, I mean, up in Northeast California, and a child disappears under unusual circumstances, and the local law enforcement agency has made that determination that an Amber Alert needs to be issued, they should certainly be able to issue that Amber Alert, and they should be able to do it geographically. And in other words, we had a little company called Beyond Missing, and 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 we were in charge of the Texas Amber Alert for quite a number of years, for about ten years. And what we did is we 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 adopted the 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 we adopted almost the jingle that a mile a minute is how fast your child can disappear. And that really is why you need to be able to do something um, very quickly. Uh, you need to you need to be able to get something out. So if if the child has been gone for less than an hour, the chances are is that they're going to be within a 60 mile radius. So what that agency should be able to do is contact, well, contact other medias, contact other agencies. Uh, contact fast food restaurants, service stations, truck stops, any place that uh, uh, highway motels, any place that that somebody leaving with a kid would have to ultimately frequent. And if you do it within that 60 mile radius, 120 mile radius, 180 mile radius, whatever it is, then you've got an effective uh, you've got an effective system that might help to bring kids home. But if under the current system, that's impossible. It, it just doesn't work that way. So, I mean, my advice is always call 911, call the FBI, call local media, and they won't come out and give you an interview, but you can let them know what's happened and you can let them know that you're available to do something like that. And if you can't do it for whatever reason, maybe somebody else in your family can talk to the media. It's, it's always good, I think, to have a family spokesperson. There's nobody that's going to make a better case for a missing child than someone within their own family. And after you've contacted the media, then you get involved with social media. I mean, you know, the first missing kid ever to go on the internet was my daughter. Um, and we basically did that at the time with one photo of Polly and a, and a picture of her kidnapper. And, and that was it. And, and, you know, in, at the very beginning, when, when Polly was missing, we wanted to do a distribution of a, a massive flyer distribution. And in order to do that, um, oh, cool. Uh, in order to do that, we, uh, somebody somebody mortgaged their house so we could buy stamps and we spent days stuffing flyers into envelopes using a mailing list that somebody had acquired 
And it basically took about eight days to finally get those flyers into the hands of the people we wanted to get them into the hands of. Well, that was in 1993. I mean, now you can log on to Facebook, you can create a fly or you can create a page for your missing person. You can put up testimonials, you can put up pictures, you can put, put up videos, uh, you can do links to to articles and you can all do all of that for absolutely nothing <laughs> you know and, and you can do it in, in a, a very short amount of time and you can link that to your instagram and to your 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 twitter and and i, I know nothing about TikTok, but I, I suspect you can probably load it up onto your TikTok account as well um so you know it's the good and the bad. I mean, it gives you you more control. Um, but unfortunately, the tools that law enforcement has been given are, are not adequate to the task, I believe. Most definitely. And I think it's it's interesting because you've given us a timeline of this evolution, right? Of, of you know, your child being the first child to, to really, if, and I'm thinking back when there was a milk carton and you would see faces of mid, you know missing children in milk cartons, and then where that kind of went. Um, there I've got one of those here. Somebody <laughs> gave it to me recently. My sister-in-law did. Right. They have a half-gallon milk carton with Polly's picture on it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, From... And that's so interesting. And even then, thinking about well, what kids made it to those milk cartons, right? What did you know? Was color? Was race something yeah. that played a? You know, th those are things that we we can look back and do some research right but i would imagine that time is of essence you know and we do have a lot of tools up in our sleeves to bring awareness when, when kids go missing the downfall then again is also that predator access to kids is more prevalent now because of you know social because of all these other tools so it's it's a uh you know a bargain right to a certain degree um yeah this is amazing i really appreciate your timeline of that because i i completely forgot about you reminded me of the, the milk carton for Once, a before facebook we actually started a, a project called the, the milk carton project and it was really all about doing what you can do on facebook now so once it became obvious that that facebook had these tools already and that you could load up all of this information and that you could do this and that you could distribute it uh really quickly we we gave up on that whole idea of the milk carton project uh because it wasn't necessary anymore you know and we would probably invested about 10k into it at that point but it, it was uh it, it 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 wasn't necessary because i don't think it could be done better than it can be done right now on facebook with all of the issues that exist with facebook um, and the privacy issues and everything, but still, it, it's a it's a fabulous forum for distributing information about missing kids. The trouble is, is unlike the Amber Alert, it's generally people in their cars looking at highway signs or hearing something on the radio, and they can actually, you know, be out there looking on Facebook. Generally, people are doing what the three of us are doing right now. We're sitting at a desk somewhere, and that's not going to help recover any missing kid immediately. You know, it, it, it can help keep a story alive. It can, there's great benefits to it, but it, it's, it's not going to really have that much impact on the immediate recovery of a, of a child that's being spirited away. Very true. Jane, do you have any other questions? No, I'm just, I'm, I'm intrigued. Um, yes. I had no clue that your daughter was the very first person yeah. missing child to be on the internet. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, 1993 was when the internet was really just starting to, to take form. And, and uh, there are a lot of tech people where I live. It's the San Francisco Bay Area. I mean, that was really kind of the birth of, of the of the internet and this whole technology movement that we're involved in now. And uh, a guy named Larry Maggot. I don't know if you guys know who Larry is. He's a he's a he's he's a, a tech guy, and he's been on CBS for years talking about tech issues. Well, he heard about 
Polly being missing um, the very day the day after she went missing and tried to figure out what's the best way that I can help this case. And he decided he could figure out a way to get this flyer of this little girl up onto the internet. And so they were doing it through bulletin boards back in the day. It, it, it didn't exist like it exists now. And uh, they got her up on several bulletin boards so that people would be able to go to those bulletin boards and download Polly's flyer. And because of that, I mean, we distributed I don't, I have no idea. Somebody had said a billion of these flyers. I have no idea, but I do know that they were hanging in airports in Europe. I mean, it, it changed things and it's, you know, it's probably one of the best things that the internet's ever done is, is, is help with this issue of missing kids. For sure. Do you, my, one of my last questions, Mr. Klaas, and, and I'm, your your legacy, right? If there is a, a message for, you know, future generations that you can leave based on what you and your family went through um, and all the, the advocacy and, and work that you've done, what, what would that be? Um, what can we keep going on, right? Like, what can we take on from everything? Well, it's changed. I mean, uh, you know, we had a, a really good run. Um, and I can't even tell you the the number of television appearances and, and testimonies in front of legislatures and 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 things like that. Um, but people lost interest. I mean, there's no real issue anymore for missing kids. You don't really hear about these cases nearly as much as you did. And I completely understand that. I mean, there's a lot of things going on in the world right now that, that demand our attention. Some of the things we've talked about, I think. But uh, legacy, I, you know, I don't think about my legacy. I've always thought about Polly's legacy and that it be a legacy of, of child protection for generations to come. And, you know, it was 28 years ago this year. So we're talking about generations now, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about the kids we served 20 years ago, bringing their own kids in now. And, and, you know, I, I would just hope that that, that continues. And, and it's really a, a legacy of, of prioritizing your children and making sure that you live a life that enables their safety, whatever that means. Um, it can mean a lot of things. It can mean where you're living exactly based on whatever your circumstances are. It's, it can mean simply locking your front door at night. Um, it could mean having your child's relevant information available in case there is an emergency and having a plan. And that's something that we've talked about and it's something that you know we've tried to put out there and, and provide the families over the course of the years so you know I, I would hope that any legacy is just a continuation of of those ideas you know um i don't have any more questions um i really appreciate your time um number one knowing how accessible you were to, to us i i never in a million years in doing the research in reading blogs and reading looking into uh your website did i feel like you would reach out very quickly and i know you know jane and i we said we're like oh my god he really did wow you know because we do reach out to a lot of people um and we just never know and so your response was was i don't know it blew me out of the water when we got the first oh. message so thank you so I'm, much for that i'm like um, everybody else man i'm just sitting here waiting for the right email to come in <laughs> But you know, the, the, the blog post was, I believe from 2014. I'm like, I don't know if he's really gonna know what he said in 2014, right? Like you just, you don't, but people do read things like that, right? We, we especially when we're researching information and wanting to connect the dots about why things are the way they are. Um, it is very empowering, I think, when we know about systems and we learn about them and we know that we can ask questions and push the envelope and not be worried about well am i gonna get you know because of the color of my skin or am i allowed 
I think that your response to me, and I know to Jane, it was very much like empowering, knowing that we can reach out to to anyone and ask questions and, and they should be able to answer. So I really appreciate that from you. So, sure. so much. Well, you know, the, the Amber Alert is basically useless now. I, I, I think it's really sad where it's gone. And I'm, I'm really sorry that the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children decided to to build it in the way that puts themselves right in the middle of it. I mean, that's what that really was all about. You know, it's about it's about the consolidation of power. So you and I, this maybe I'm stepping out here, but you, you find that there are certain organizations, nonprofit organizations in the United States. You've, you've got an emergency response. It's going to be the Red Cross. You know, and there are so many other agencies that deserve attention and have good ideas and probably can do a better response, but but there's no room for them at the table. And it's the same with missing kids. It's uh, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, and there's no room really for anybody else at the table. Uh, I was at a steering meeting when they were putting the Amber Alert together. And I made many of the arguments that I've just made to you, that it has to be localized, that it, it should be internet based and it shouldn't be based on the emergency alert system, which is something that came out of the 1950s. And that it, you know, it, it, it needs to happen smartly and it needs to happen quickly, but none of those concerns were ever addressed. They'd already made up their minds. They knew what they were going to do. So, you know, if it's missing kids, it's going to go through them. It's emergency response. It's going to go through, it's going to go through the Red Cross. If it's got to do with the arts, it's going to go through uh, NPR and PBS. So you'll, you'll, in other words, you're never going to be able to bring the, the, the world-class cellist to your community with a grant because all the grants are going to one organization. And I, I know this is a bit of a tangent, but it's certainly something that I think about. All the time. So, it's a very good point. I think that we don't ever really consider where we give our leadership to. Uh, and it's interesting because you're absolutely right. There are many organizations out there that should be at the table that because someone doesn't agree with someone's idea, they, and that's just by experience that I've seen as well, that we tend to just put them in the back put them somewhere else and that's unfortunate um that's that that those are my comments at this time <laughs> and we're yeah. gonna keep researching right you know listen i mean i i i run my agency i've got two there's two employees at the class kids foundation we took in 179 calls last year as i mentioned earlier um in all of the areas regarding missing kids. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children brings in $36 million a year, much of it public money. They have hundreds of employees and they can't say what I just said. They can't say, well, we took in these calls last year and we responded in these ways and these are the ways that we respond because at the end of the day, they don't do anything. <laughs> They really don't do anything. They do nothing at all. They create systems that are less than they, than they could be and less than they should be. Um, and they do they do uh, uh, age progression pictures, which eh, may or may not have much to do with anything. But yeah, the the allocation of resources should certainly be much different. But as as long as you have politics and as long as you have have. Uh, as long as you have politics and as long as you have America, I guess you're going to have these other organizations. And and I think ultimately I stopped fighting it. Ultimately, I just stopped fighting it. I, my energy goes into what we do and not goes into what anybody else does anymore. And and I guess that's my final lesson is that is that you can improve yourself and, and, and you can pursue your own missions, but don't get distracted by what everybody else is doing. Beautiful. <laughs> That's my thought. That's beautiful. I don't know. Jane, do you have anything else? I love that last piece of advice. <laughs> we all need. Well, I just, you know, thank you so much for your time again. Um, sure. 
I, I have appreciated uh, every bit of it. I know, you know, we'll. we'll... Shout out to Mr. Mark class such a cool cool guy uh, shout out to everyone in the chat that just joined us as well Heidi everyone out there everyone in the bushes as well hey thank you so so much so just wanted to bring this to you guys because it is for me um like I said I'm not I don't fan about celebrities you know yes celebrities are great maybe if I I don't know it would have to be it depends on the kind of celebrity because I don't really fan about things but I tend to fan about people that have done advocacy work that have done the late work so someone like Mr. Mark class for me was someone that um, had been in the community uh, made arguments looked at things and so for him to even respond to a blog post from 2014 and I'm thinking in my head, this man doesn't probably didn't even know what he wrote in 2014. It was really just um, interesting and even given me so much context and information about the Amber Alert and how it works and where it's it's working and where it's not. And so even today, looking at these two current missing um one child is missing by the name of Edward Gilbert from the state of Florida. And then we have another uh, baby girl missing by the name of Summer Wells. Uh, and she's from Tennessee. You have one with an Amber Alert and then you have one that is just a missing child. But even the criteria between them, if you were to just look into it, it could really determine, are we really looking at the right things? And even if it's not about making a bigger change for you, one thing um, that stood out to me is, we have to figure out who we have in leadership, right? Who's, who's, who's at the table. You'll be surprised that we have some wonderful community leaders. If we just gave people the chance to lead and, um, the opportunity to do so and created those platforms to do so. And so it's, it's those people that, you know, come in with innovative ideas about how to do things. If your child is the first child to go on the internet in 1993, which was poly class, which I know the plane is Jane and I, we looked at each other like, what did he really just say that? Cause I had no clue guys. Um, that was someone's innovative idea, right? To put a child's face on the internet and blast it out there in 1993, who would have known that from there, you know, the trickle effect would be more social media, more attention, um, more access to people that wouldn't necessarily have access to say a billboard. So I just find that to be very interesting how one works with the other. And then at the same time, again, not necessarily going about changing a huge system because it takes more than one person, but really about staying informed. What does your state have? What does your state have? That is right. And I've been finding out about that one too, Heidi, that it is a very strange case. I believe there was some polygraphs done. Don't quote me on that. I really don't know a whole lot. There's a serious uh, criminal background. Her aunt disappeared and was never found. There's some, there's some interesting stuff there. So I, I do feel like that's a very interesting case and that the terrain in that area is very interesting, uh, meaning that anyone can get lost um, or be put somewhere, unfortunately. I hate to say it that way, but um, that's just the kind of world that we live in right now where, you know, things bad things do happen all the time. So I really appreciate, number one, Mr. Class, for giving us the time. And everyone in the chat, thank you so much. And yes, um, I will definitely keep an eye on the sound on the next one. Uh, thank you so much for your feedback on that. All feedback, guys. We love it. So thank you for doing that. Um, I'm curious to know what everybody's thoughts are because, you know, the time with Mr. Mark Class, I think, um, again, a man that had a horrible tragedy, okay, that that man that that brutally murdered his daughter. Okay, it, it was an interesting case because if you think about it, there was an opportunity for her to have been saved, and she wasn't. Okay, and so then, what do you do with that pain? And I did, you know, we asked him very early on, how do you um, balance the advocacy work? Okay, the advocacy work, and then also being the parent of a child that that was murdered. All right, and then not only that. 
seeking justice for your child, which, you know, the, the, the perpetrator is, he's on death row. Okay. But ever since then, the, the, uh, you quit your job, you quit your job and you know, you're not going to make a lot of money, but you know that this is where you need to go. He never went back to the car business. I believe he was a car salesman business. He never went back to it because he couldn't see himself doing that. He really wanted, that's where his anger went. He channeled it to make sure to keep kids safe, right? To keep the community informed. He traveled in a lot of places and he's been invited to several um, committees, steering committees. I mean, even he, he has so much insight into some of these systems. The Amber Alert, uh, I'm sure, like I said, it has its purpose, but it's not an all proof, save all everything. We just looked at Edward Gilbert's situation as a missing child. And I'd shown you guys a picture and I'll show it to you guys again so you guys can see. This is an interesting situation because like, it's not like, um, you know, the Amber Alert doesn't show a lot of great numbers either. And I thought that was like, all right, well, I mean, I guess it's nice. There's a couple of kids at least that have been saved by it, right? We could say that. Let's see if I can go back to that little website. Here we go. Absolutely. Here we go. And so then on here, he was given a missing child alert. When I hit the activation map, guys, here's your activation map. 228 Amber Alerts activated. Cases were solved due to Amber Alert was 72. And this was last updated on June 22nd of 2020. So this is, so it makes me wonder then, those that didn't meet the criteria, those that didn't meet the criteria for an Amber Alert because of whatever X amount of reason, how many of those have not been found, Because you know, in general? I don't know, just a thought, just a thought, throwing that out there. The NCMEC is an in-depth with the Amber Alert. They continue to issue them 30 minutes later or less or canceled. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you so much. And he has been missing for over two weeks, but yesterday it hit the media. Shame. You know what? And that's what we just said, that yesterday it just hit the media. Why did it just hit the media yesterday? He was missing for two weeks. I understand Summer Wells, five-year-old, right? horrible terrain. But now you have another, um, you know, Heidi Black just said, shout out to you, Heidi, said that there's some interesting circumstances that are happening there that are very questionable. Okay. So spinning our wheels here. All right. And and I, I don't know the history. I, I can't say that I own or own or even can speak, so to speak, to the history of the Amber Alert. It is my understanding that no one saw um, Amber Hagerty, the one, the act that, that it was named after, no one saw her uh, be abducted. I could be wrong and please correct me. So to me, it's like, well, who made the rule? Who made that criteria that someone needed to see somebody get abducted? I understand. I don't want a bunch of cops running around, you know, uh, making up situations and whatnot. We don't want to complicate the situation. However, I need to know who embedded that criteria and who said it was who said it was it was okay who said that this was going to work and if you guys know the answer let me know because it, it depends jurisdiction by jurisdiction it is not the same it is not the same i'm going to tell you what i'm going to do i'm going to put a little little brief little break thing i want you to think about what i'm asking because i think it, it's an important question okay think about what i'm saying is all right so what does my state look like now somebody told me that in the state of texas and this is where i say it varies by jurisdiction that actually Charles story. Okay. Horrible, horrible death. All right. Another failure of being able to initiate either a missing child, an Amber alert or something. It didn't happen on time. So what are we doing? But yet we quickly Nick Mick quickly. And again, Nick Mick is the national, um, what is it? Missing child's, uh, I don't know the whole acronym, but, um, I'm very well, well, the whole wording to it, but, it's a very lengthy one, but very quickly to, you know, try to hurry up and, and get things out there. But there's such a lag in time, guys. And if this was your kid, your niece, your nephew, your grandchild, your whatever, I'm telling you, it is very hard to keep positive and or peaceful 
relations with the police. Mr. Class said, listen, the system doesn't work. We acknowledge that. Okay. It doesn't work the way it's set up. It doesn't work. And we even saw a map in our first episode of this. It doesn't work. You have people running around. You have one of those maps that says file a missing person report, file a, a report, a document. Wait a minute. But didn't the parent already do that? So you're, mm, you're duplicating efforts here, guys. One thing I've heard it said, and I cannot remember who said it. So if you want to Google.com this quote, systems rich? No, it goes something to the effect of we are resource rich, systems poor. There you go. We are resource rich, systems poor. So the way in which we initiate these systems and we fix them, the processes, uh, we make people go file police reports up and down, right? When we already have one police report, we have one person, a parent, okay? Or someone that's representing the parent, giving the information. If you have family that can help out in this situation, great, okay? Yes, you should always keep a good relationship with the police. You have to. At the end of the day, they are the investigators. However, you can call the FBI. You don't have the color within the lines, okay? You can go outside of that. You should be able to, and you should be able to question. And that's, if anything that I learned with Mr. Mark Class is you can reach out to Mr. Mark Class and ask him questions. All right. There are organizations and agencies that do help. Um, we saw that with the, Le the Lachea Stein story as well, where they helped with flyers. That's right. And this is another thing, too. We're seeing this every day. We have minors that are assumed to be runaways. If you have a kid, let me tell you, I think this is interesting because it also varies state by state. If your kid has never run away, okay, and he goes missing, and the first thing that the cop tells you or the investigator tells you, well, maybe they ran away, but they don't show that behavior. So then are you SOL because of that? See, what patterns or what are we looking at to determine the difference between a runaway and a missing child? And even if it's a miss, if it's a runaway, why it needs to be treated the same way, right? Because they're still missing. They're not within your sight. It's the flexibility of these definitions that we make that just kill me sometimes. And that's the piece that I really wanted to understand. Now, mind you, we had been looking at uh, Quan Bobby Charles. That's what initiated our interview with Mr. Mark Class a while ago. That's right. You don't have to wait 24 hours. We had, we had looked into that. And um, when Mr. Mark Class answered... You know, it really let me know that this man is very invested in, in, in seeing these changes. And when I, I'll tell you that legacy question, it wasn't any, a question that I had planned to ask or anything. Um, you know, there were some questions that I had ran with, with the plaintiff's chain and you guys know, you know, the plaintiff's chain and I, we work kind of hand by, you know, hand, you know, she's my mentor, shout out to her. She's always, always been a great um, mentor and, and guide. But one question that I had was that legacy question. And part of it is because I had been following his um, movement for quite some time in a couple of years. And it just kind of came to me to ask him that. I wanted to know, you know, you leave here, right? It's been 28 you know, years since your child was murdered and, 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 you know, was kidnapped, abducted. What is your legacy? And the first thing, and he continues to say, it's his daughter. It's the legacy that we've left for our child. So to me, that just shows that dedication. That's exactly the kind of people that we need in law enforcement, right? See, thank you, Jessica. So in Texas, they make us wait 24 hours before they even talk to you. Does it matter on the age? See, because that's the other factor. So when we saw Summer Wells, age five, here we have Edward Gilbert, age what? Uh, I think he's 14, if I remember seeing that number. I think he's 14, I'm pretty sure. That is crazy. So is that a, in, including younger minors? And see, the time is important when a kid goes missing, right? Opportunity to do different things. I don't know. Ooh, see, here we go. Texas tried it with me. My sister had been taking my niece and nephews and they were six. Thank you. See, tried it. Challenge it, guys. Challenge it. Be respectful. OK, don't don't go crazy because I know uh, what that means is you still have to have a working relationship with these people.
but challenge it. You should be able to, your tax money goes to it. Your tax money goes to this Amber Alert stuff, okay? Your tax money is funding the coordinator that runs the program, all of them. So you need to challenge it, get to know who's up there and figure it out. And even on the day, because stuff like this happens when you least expect it, it's important. It's very important. And kids are being targeted every day. Yes, I swear to God on my kids. That's right. I call my my godbrother, who is a state trooper, who, oh, thank you. See? And that's the thing. It's like you have another person in the system. So it's it's always helpful to know who works in there to figure how things work out. But in situations when you don't, use your voice, stay informed, use the advocacy piece. I know, guys, that this isn't the content that's about the salacious stuff. This is the content that's about the real stuff, right? The The non-manufactured stuff. Okay, and this is important. And if you do anything else when you're off, just find out what does your state do? What do they say? Thank you. Uh, once a verified missing child, we pay to promote their picture and story in the area on Facebook and thousands see it locally. We get more responses, which we pass on. More people seem to respond to FB. Um, you know what? And I would love for you to um, reach out to me. I do have an email. I haven't memorized it yet. I need to memorize. I'm really bad about that. I also have an IG and I do have a, a Facebook. I'm not on there as much though, but this is a good thing to know. Um, this is interesting. And I'm assuming when you say you pay, does your organization then pay to um, like, these are volunteers or is the family having to pay? Like, I'm just kind of curious to know how that works out. Maybe it's donations. I'm curious, right? But um, bringing this up here, because it's important, definitely under 18, there's no 24 hour uh, recording to NCIC. See, that's, that's interesting. And yet human trafficking, the most invisible crime that we have in the United States that's impacting our kids. And, you know, you don't have to report everything. If he goes missing or runs away and then becomes a victim of that. There's too many stories like that, guys, too many stories. We have legal documents that she did not have custody and have a mental disorder and does not allow her to be alone with the kids. See, and those are very much important. I'm really happy that um, no delay to happen there, right? Can you imagine? That's the thing is imagine. Don't, don't put yourself in that situation and God forbid that you are. And if you are, okay, prepare yourself. Nobody likes to prepare for the storm. I don't, I, I don't, but at least I know what I can and can't do in my state. Okay. And I know how far I can push the envelope. And remember, everybody can call the FBI and find out, you know, you still have to work with your local police, but I'm not going to wait for them to tell me that the nine o'clock news is going to post a picture. I'm going to make sure it gets posted out of my own, my own doing my own advocacy. Okay. Sorry. It's when you wait, that stuff just happens. No 24 hour period for any adult, I believe, but definitely a lot for minors that you do not have to wait. Thank you. That's a good thing to know. Thank you so much. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. And I was going to put a commercial, but, you know, we really got into some of the stuff that we were talking about. I'm very curious to know what your guys' thoughts are. I know it was a lot of um, information. And if you did not watch part one and two, you want to because, you know, Mr. Mark Class does give a great um, in-depth about police relations. He even said, and I quote, you know, I know that if my, if I was a black man and my daughter was, was a black little girl, we would not be having the, the media that we had back then. I'm well aware of it. So it, it's interesting because even in 2011, when he answered that question, and here we are in 2021, the answer has not changed. There is still a failure, still a failure in this Amber Alert system for children of color, minorities, black and brown children, you know, children in the process in general, there's a failure and we have to do something about it, right? We have to do something about it. So yes, thank you all for coming. Thank you so much. I'm going to have to check you out, Protect Our Children, Inc. Um, I'm curious to know how you even found our lives. So I'll be checking you out. I would love to connect with you. You know, we do have an area where we do missing. We love to get into, you know, like I said, I do a variety. My content is very fluid. We like to do a little bit of everything. Um, but this is the important stuff for me. I, I really do get into this because I feel like, you know, I'm a rabbit and this is what I was meant to do, you know. 
Anyway, shout out to the chat. Shout out to everyone else that stuck around with us. Please share, please share, share, share. You have you have a missing child in an active Amber Alert. We need to share this information. If you guys can share this video, I don't care if you, you know, if you don't subscribe, that's fine, but at least share the information so that the word gets out because there's an issue with this. And we have more to do with what's going on than we think. Believe me or not, just just do it. Share it. That's all. All right, rabbits out.